Good evening and welcome to our forum for the Raytown Board of Aldermen. This forum is sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Kansas City, Jackson Clay and Platte Counties and the Raytown Area Chamber of Commerce and Tourism. I am Anitra Steele and I am a member of the League and lead the forum's admin team. I would like to introduce our co-host, Vicki Turnbow, president of the chamber. Vicki? Good evening. Welcome to the forum for the Raytown Aldermen. The Raytown Area Chamber of Commerce and Tourism is happy to work with the League of Women Voters to present this voter educational event to the citizens of Raytown. We encourage everyone to be informed and to get out and vote, especially on April 4th. I have the honor of introducing our current mayor, a veteran of the league's forums process. And with that, I'd like to introduce Mayor Mike McDonough. Good evening. I wanna thank the League of Women Voters and the Raytown Chamber of Commerce and Tourism for providing this forum for the citizens. And I also wanna encourage everyone to vote on April 4th, 2023. Have a good evening and a good listen. Thank you both. Uh, the League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization. We neither support nor oppose candidates or parties. Our mission is to empower voters and to defend our democracy. We envision a democracy where every citizen has the knowledge, the right, the desire, and the confidence to participate. Our membership is open to everyone. I'd like for you to know the other league members volunteering with me. Tommy Sexton is our moderator. Misty Jagger is our timekeeper. And our Zoom is monitored by Crystal Kemp. The public has sent in the questions via the league's website, LWVKC, which will be used to ask the candidates. Now I will turn our program over to our moderator, Tommy Sexton, who has been a member of the league for over 26 years. Tommy? Good, good evening. Um, your vote matters. Tonight we learn about candidates for the Raytown Board of Aldermen on your April 4th ballot. The Board of Aldermen, Aldermen proposes ordinances, resolutions, as well as approve the city budget. Only the Board of Aldermen can make decisions for the city. The mayor as presiding officer of the board can propose suggest, encourage adoption of a proposal, but the mayor only votes to break a tie vote. There are 10 aldermen, two for each of five boards. They serve a four-year term. Voters have submitted questions for candidates via the league's website, and you can now, lwvkc.org. Forms last approximately 90 minutes. I'll ask each candidate the same question selected from those submitted, the order of the candidate responses will be determined by a random rotation. Each candidate will be given 90 seconds to respond to each question, two minutes for a closing statement at the end. All of the candidates running for these offices have been invited. We welcome seven candidates this evening for the Raytown Board of Aldermen, and we wanna thank them right now for participating in the forum and in democracy. It will be recorded and available on the league's website at lwvkc.org. Candidates, please answer the question, ask, stick to the topic. There will be no rebuttals, but you can go back to an issue during your two minute closing remarks. Let us begin. We have the seven candidates, two for ward one, two for ward two, two for ward four, and one for ward five. Unfortunately, we don't have anyone from Ward 3 tonight uh, because of illness. Now, going to the first question. Kind of predictable for the first one. Please introduce yourself. Explain why you're running for Raytown Alderman. Describe your qualifications as it relates to this position. And we will start with DeMonte Roche Rochester. Did you hear the question. Yes, good evening. Thank you, League Women Voters and the uh, Chamber of Commerce for Ray Chan for hosting this event for us tonight. I really appreciate that. Um, the reason why I am running is because 
I'm bringing innovative ideals and be able to work with the other members of, 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 um, of the Board of Aldery. Um, the qualifications I have for this position is I have prior, I mean, prior political experience and prior budget experience and makes me qualified to be a candidate for this position. I use the rest of my time. Thank you. Jason Smedden. First of all, thank you, Raytown Chamber and League of Women Voters. My name is Jason Snedden. My wife and I have been married for 24 years. We have five grown kids that live in Raytown, 13 adopted grandchildren. We uh, absolutely plan on Raytown being our forever home. You'll have to wheel me out dead. Uh, we love this city. We love the people. We love the rich and beautiful diversity that's unique to Raytown. If you know me, you know I'm a hard worker and I'll be attentive and committed to attend meetings in person. I will take concerns seriously. You can count on me to listen attentively and respectively and be educated on the topics that we're supposed to vote on. I believe we share the same common goal of building an even better Raytown. I'm a champion of ideas and bringing people together. I've been self-employed and an entrepreneur for most of my adult life. I'm a Missouri realtor and I'm also a local pastor. Um, I'm an active member of the Raytown Chamber, the Rotary Club, the Women's Council of Realtors, National Missouri Association of Realtors and KCRAR. I've been reviewed and approved by realtor members of the RPAC Board of Trustees as a candidate. I'm partnering with Caring for Kids KC to support Raytown schools and give back to the community and to our students, our future generation. I look forward to meeting with everybody and working with Raytown citizens to make this an even better place to live, work, and play. Thank you. Teresa Garza. Good evening and thank you for having me and to the hosts for hosting the forum this evening. My name is Teresa Garza. I was born and raised here in the area, I actually went to Raytown School District schools my entire life, graduating from Raytown South High. Um, I moved back into the Raytown area in 2018 when my grandfather passed away and left me his house and I've been remodeling it for the last few years. The reason I am running is because I have been talking to neighbors and other individuals throughout the community for the past several years on their frustration with where city government is and the lack of representation and accessibility that they have to their elected officials. Some of the things that I am very familiar with and that I have continued to hear on the campaign trail and even prior was the public safety um, within our communities as well as infrastructure needs needs and ensuring that we are delivering on those co core basic city services. Um, as a resident of Raytown and as someone who has joined or been here most of my life, including my family, I look forward to serving you and I will be accessible and available for you to reach out to at any time. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Azur. Uh, I want to thank the League of Women's Voters for uh, putting this uh, giving us the opportunity to meet the public and them to meet us. Um, I moved to Raytown in 1970. Um, I took a teaching job at Raytown High School coaching. Um, I've lived in the house that I currently live in for the last 40 years. Uh, I taught at Raytown High School for 30 years. I've been a coach. Um, but it goes beyond that. Uh, if you live in Raytown, it's a matter of getting to know your neighbors, to go to the museum, our local museum, or to the Rice Hermani uh, local historical spot to be part of their soup days. There are so many activities that, that make Raytown a little unique compared to other big cities in the surrounding area. And that's why I have really chosen to not just become a actively involved in my community because originally when I first ran, it was because that so many people in my generation either fought or lost their lives in Vietnam. And I felt like I needed to give myself back to my community as they did theirs in what way I could. And serving my neighborhood and the people of Raytown was one way to do that. One of the things that I've learned being on the board of aldermen is that, uh, over a period of months and years that you serve, you get many, many, many phone calls from constituents, both in your ward and outside of your ward. Thank you. And, I think we'll have to stop. Keep that okay. thought, you can add it next time. Sure. Thank you. Um, is Diane Krizek available? I know she was having trouble getting on. If she's not, then we're just gonna strike her for now. Uh, and we will go to the same question. Mary Jane Van Bus Buskirk, please. 
First of all, thank you very much for having this forum tonight. I have lived in Raytown since 1972. We have had four sons graduate from Raytown South High School. I was raised in a small town where we took care of each other, where my parents instilled um, good work, work ethics in, in their kids. I got a job at eight years old, washing dishes in a cafe and moved on from there. I want to serve the constituents in my ward and I have done it faithfully. I have gotten calls 24 seven, 365, and I always return them. Matter of fact, one time we were on vacation in Wisconsin, we got a call from a gentleman who needed help. We took his call, we tried to help him the best we could. And uh, <clears throat> I just wanna say that uh, I wanna continue serving and helping the people of Raytown. That's what we do. That's how we were raised. Thank you. Thank you. Greg Walters. You're, you're muted. Can't hear you. There we go. Can you hear us now? Can't hear you. There we go. Greg is attempting to get his mic on here. And can you can you talk, Greg? Okay, we're gonna let you try to figure that out. Go to the second question, and then we'll try to return to that first question for you when you get back on, okay? If you will try to find your audio um, and uh, unmute it on the bottom left, usually. I think I found it. Okay, go ahead. Okay. It was hiding on the top of the screen. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I'll be very brief since I've already used up a good chunk of my time. I just want to thank the League of Women Voters for holding this forum. I think it's especially important because not everybody has a newspaper anymore to read to see what's going on. So this is their one glimpse to view the candidates and understand exactly where they stand on issues. I, to introduce myself, I'm a lifetime resident of Raytown, Missouri. I've been married to my wife, Misi, for 40 some, uh, 45 years now, not 40 some, but 45 years. We have uh, two children from that marriage, and uh, both of them are very successful in their careers as they're moving forward into their 30-year-old range, 30 to 40s. And I, we also have three beautiful grandchildren. Um, as, as far as my experience and what I can offer, I've served in public office in Raytown for 30 years. Now, not all of that has been continuous. The last time I was reelected was just four years ago after an absence of about 10 years. So I've been on and off the board. I think that the fact that the people kept returning me to office is a good credential that I can't top in any way that I can think of. So that's about all I have to say. And I see you getting ready to pull out the hook and pull me off anyway, because I've got 13 <laughs> seconds. So that's thank you for this opportunity. That's fine, thank you. Okay, second question. And this one will go first to Jason Snedden, please. Raytown has been growing. And affordable housing has been described as a problem, both for families and the older retired population. Uh, affordable housing. What thoughts do you have about it and how the Raytown, Raytown Commission could address this issue? And again, Jason, Sned. Uh, it's actually a really great question. Um, the market in general has gone through the roof everywhere. Um, there's a possibility there is land here. There's a possibility to build uh, apartments uh, and other forms of multi-family um, housing. It would be a great opportunity for us. Um, uh, there's also programs available that a lot of people don't know about uh, when it comes to home ownership as well. Um, one's available through Missouri where they will um, pay your 4% or pay you 4% as a grant moving towards that, and then you just have remaining your closing costs. Uh, it's easy for an FHA loan. Um, but there's just, a, there's available space, and that's really what it boils down to. Um, it's not necessarily community where you want to build brand new homes, um, but it's perfect in the realm of apartments. That's it. Okay, thank you. Jim Azur. Thank you. <clears throat> Actually, Raytown is a diamond in the rough. We're very close to the inner city. 
Um, housing in Raytown probably is the most affordable in all the metropolitan area. And I've walked my ward many times. Uh, this time I've talked to almost 700 residents. Haven't talked to all of them, but I've been to the doorsteps. I've probably talked to several hundred. It's really pleasing the number of young people that I've seen. And I, and I usually ask them, you know, where'd you go to high school? Where'd you come from? And what's really remarkable is that they're coming from everywhere. Grain Valley, Olathe, Shawnee Mission, uh, and sometimes even to the from the outstate area. But I think it it shows that th we have an attractiveness about us because it is affordable. Many of the young people find it very difficult to get loans because of the high interest rate. Raytown is the most affordable. And yes, I do believe in a commission. I do we I think we need to uh, network with each other neighbors and talk about how we might attract more young people into the, the district um, and maybe even go into a marketing system, uh, especially with our realtors, because they're the ones that should be pushing Raytown first and not last. Thank you. Greg Walters. Yes, would you repeat the question, please? I will. Raytown's been growing and affordable housing has been described as a problem, both for families and older retired population. What thoughts do you have about do you have about if or how the Raytown Commission could address this issue? I think I'd have to tag along with a little bit of what Mr. Azure just said, and that is that we do have affordable housing here. And like him, I've also walked my ward uh, actually twice this election, and I've talked to many, many people. And the one thing that sticks in my mind is as I go through the different neighborhoods, and I've been walking them, as I pointed out earlier, for close to 30 years, it's always been in the same political area, um, is that I'm seeing a lot of gentrification in our community. And that is people going in, taking older homes, cleaning them up, making them better, adding on to them, making them larger. I believe that there is still opportunity and there is still vacant land in Raytown. I know there is uh, in, in Raytown that we should take advantage of and try to fill it in. One thing that is related to this issue is the attention uh, that is given to bringing commercial properties into residential areas. I believe that we should take care not to let that happen. People put a lot into their homes and they expect to have a lot back from the community. And it's you take a, if you allow it to be invaded by commercial property in that area, you can have trouble with people feeling that their quality of life has been downgraded due to what often comes with commercial activity. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Mary Jane Van Buster. Well, I have to agree with what Alderman Azure said. We have the most affordable housing around. There are also multiple senior housing developments. Um, one of them just recently built. There's a lot of people that are moving here because of the quality of life of Raytown and because of the affordability. I don't know that um, it's a huge problem. We all know that real estate prices have rocketed. And um, I just think that um, Raytown is the place to come to raise your family. And it's as Mr. Walter said, a lot of people are buying these older homes. They're going in, they're, they're um, tearing out the inside, putting it like they want, and even building on rooms. And that's the most affordable way to go. Thank you. Thank you. Teresa Garza. Yes, thank you for the question. Um, I would say that we do have affordable housing, but we also have a lower housing stock. And so how do we address that issue? I know my daughter and son-in-law recently tried to find a home here in Raytown and had um, you know, a difficulty doing so because they were being outbid on um, the ho houses that they were trying to purchase by developers and so forth coming in and overbidding. So how do we look at that and how do we address it? And I think that in, even the Raytown Comprehensive Plan kind of addresses it and says that um, single family neighborhoods should 
remain Raytown's priority as far as it goes when it comes to housing. So we need to look at that. We need to figure out um, where do we put those, whether it's duplexes or apartments and we build up. Um, and then what does that look like? And I know that there are some areas that they've already identified in that comprehensive plan, such as um, the area along Westridge and then the area between downtown and 71st. So it's also attracting and trying to see um, developers that would come in and look at those areas and what type of housing that could look like, whether it's walk-up single duplexes or condos, um, but there is potential and it's how do we address it as a city. Thank you. Thank you. Demonte Rochester. Yeah, thank you for the question. I do believe that Raytown is affordable. I would go back and re refer to the uh, Raytown Comprehensive Plan because it is a good plan. I do, I do believe that I feel like we do need to build up on that. Um, and I'll be I want to be one of the aldermen that works works the plan and work with the Raytown Commission to make sure that we build up on that and make more uh, family units or because Raytown is changing for the better, getting in new families and we need more family unit homes. We need to bring those issues to the Raytown Commission and look be able to look at the Raytown Commission plan and make sure that we're doing everything that we need to be doing according to the Raytown Commission plan. Thank you for my time. Thank you. Third question, and uh, we'll start with Greg Walters on this one. Are you satisfied with the existing number and condition of parks and trails in Raytown? And if not, what changes do you believe need to happen? Greg. Thank, thank you. The uh, park system in Raytown is unique. It's uh, not overly large. We have one large park in Raytown, Kanegi Park. Um, it's just been had new tennis, new tennis courts put on it. Uh, Coleman Park, which is actually in my ward, uh, is a good example of a park that was starting to decline, but we have brought it back with uh, additional security, um, additional lighting, um, and uh, more attention by the park board on it. I, I, I'm really proud of what they've done in upgrading our community in that way. Uh, the only question I wonder about is, we do have a park that's outside the city limits. And right now that is being used by some groups that the park department has found who want to use it. It's down by the Little Blue Trace River. It's called Little Blue Trace Park. It's got softball diamonds, baseball diamonds and so forth. It is a recreational park. Um, I believe that, I don't know what their condition is. If it's making money now or not, as far as that goes, it's not that a park should have to, but that particular one is serving more people outside of Raytown than it does in Raytown. So it's something that might be looked at in the future, but I, I can only speak for you know a thought outside of the box on that one. The rest of them, our parks, I don't get many complaints about them quite honestly anymore. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had some really bad situations. Uh, fortunately, they are in the past and I'm looking forward to having a nice place to go walk my dog. So thank you. Thank you. Jim Azur, Azur. Thank you. I. There's no question that we do have outstanding parks. Uh, I think that our park board works very well with the staff and they really have gone to the uh, parks e extremes looking for ways that they can improve our parks. And they've done that. I think things that we could do uh, are look at some of the individual sports that we don't have like racquetball. I know I've had constituents ask me about that. I think the number one thing that I see in our public parks that we used to have that we no longer have, but we don't have it in other, in other cities either, and that is volunteer Little League sports. Little League sports in this country has become uh, a rich man sport. Soccer, baseball costs literally hundreds of dollars. We used to have a race, a Raytown Little League football team, Raytown baseball, softball, and that requires a lot of volunteer and it's kind of gone by the wayside. I know we're really fighting to bring that back, but to me, this is the heart of the country. We need to find a way in a community like Raytown where we have uh, what I would call a lower income where these kids can't afford the rich programs outside of Raytown, keep them home, see if we can't rebuild a network of little league sports for the younger kids. Thank you. Mary Jane Van Buskirk, please. Thank you. I think we have tremendous parks here. Uh, we have a great parks department. They keep the parks looking good. We did have, as Greg said, some problems at one point in time, but I think those problems have been um, handled. We've 
put lights in the parks. We've got security in the parks. And, um, and I think that um, right now it's under control. Uh, we do have Little League baseball, be, or I guess you would call it Little League baseball being reinstated by uh, a gentleman here in Raytown. And uh, I think it would be good if, if a lot of the young guys out here would step up and volunteer for it. Um, they don't want my baseball skills because um, at 77, I'm not very good anymore. Used to play it in high school, but um, I, I am really proud of our parks. And uh, I think that we do a great job with our parks and thanks to the park department. Thank you. Thank you. Teresa Garza. Yes, thank you for the question. Um, I do think that we have some great parks. I know that there's six of them, but we do have a couple that are kind of outside um, the district that a lot of people use, such as Cave Springs. And Greg kind of alluded to the Little Blue, which um, has the baseball diamonds and the soccer fields that my grandson actually plays at. And we also have the Rock Island Trail um, that is great throughout, you know, not just great town, but just throughout the area. Um, and I know using it quite a bit, especially during COVID, it's a great trail to walk along and they've now even expanded it even more and will continue to expand it. Um, I think one of the things that I have heard as I've talked to people throughout the community is some of the concerns still with the safety around the parks and how do we address that as a city and what does that look like? And so I think we have to take that into consideration. And there are also people, as Jim had mentioned, that are looking for other, um, you know, activities besides just walking and so forth. And I, I've heard, you know, people talking about pickleball, which is a huge thing right now. And what would that look like? And um, so there's a lot of things to say and to look at and how we make the parks even better. Um, I know that also with the little league stuff, they do have, you know, baseball and so forth coming back and soccer, as my, as I mentioned, my grandson was part of. And um, my granddad also coached Great Town Little League football and baseball my entire childhood. So I think there are some things that we can definitely improve on, but it's a great park system overall. Thank you. DeMonte Rochester. I'm satisfied with where our parks board. I think they do an excellent job through our city, through our parks. Um, I don't see a concern with our parks at this point. And uh, I believe we have the best parks board around in the municipality area. So I have faith in our parks board and we in good shape. Thank you. Jason Snedden. Thank you. So uh, I know that we have a great parks board. We have a great parks department and the maintenance is absolutely stellar at those. Um, the one thing I heard as I was walking through the ward is a couple of people saying, what parks do we have? So I think there needs to be more coverage and awareness made of what is available out there. Um, I am ultimately satisfied with what we have. The maintenance is good. Um, I know that we have a new grant writer that's working really hard on the potential for bringing uh, our parks up to par and even expanding. Uh, some of the things we are lacking, a soccer program, I think that's huge for families and for children because it's a, a large team sport and a lot of people come together at the same time. Um, Parks ultimately are what families are looking for next to schools when it comes to where they're going to move. I believe uh, parks uh, develop and build community. I believe they bring people together and there's a lot that can be done there. Uh, we do have a couple of spots that um, could use some help. I'm not sure what the current status is, but there was the old super splash. That's a massive feature that could be something that would bring things back. So there's a lot to be done, but I believe we're doing an incredible job as a city. Thank you. We'll go to the next question and we'll start that one with Mary Jane Van Veskirk. The question is, uh, there has been controversy in Raytown about which taxes, if any, are best for the city. What are your thoughts about use or sales taxes versus municipal bonds? Give us your thoughts about the current financial state of, of the city. Starting with Mary Jane. Well, we did pass the user tax and we got almost a million dollars off of that. That was a very wise move. And thank you to the voters who passed that. On the ballot on, on uh, April the 4th is the marijuana tax. And I think that uh, we should pass that. If that's a tax that we can get, I think that we should um, cash in on it. It will help the, uh, the city revenue. I think the city is sound. Um, could you repeat that again? I don't think I've touched on all the, the okay. aspects of the question. There's a controversy sometimes between which taxes are best 
uh, what for this for Raytown? What are your thoughts about sales or use taxes versus municipal bonds? And and give us your current thoughts about the the uh, thoughts about the current financial state of the city. I think that the gold bonds were good. We needed them to move the city forward. The, the citizens spoke on that, and I think we need to to uh, go that direction. I'm not a big tax and spend person by any means, but I think that in this instance, it was needed. I think the city is financially sound. I think we're doing very good with our tax money, and I think we're moving in the right direction. Thank you. Jason Snedden. Yeah, so the use tax I know played a major role and I think it exceeded expectations for the city in general. Um, marijuana tax, that's another one. I know we only have, I think, one dispensary. So I don't know to what level that would bring anything in. Um, but nevertheless, as someone who doesn't use marijuana, I, I think it's warranted for those that are recreational users over those are, that are medic medicinal users. Um, I think the concentration should be on potentially both. I don't think there's any way we could ever fix our infrastructure without some sort of a bond. Um, if we waited 40 years at a million dollars a year, we'd be driving on dirt by the time that happened. So definitely something needs to change. It is a way that we can move things forward and change the complete image of Raytown because quite frankly, people believe that our image is based on uh, lack of quality and in infrastructure. Okay, thank you. Teresa Garza. Yes, thank you. Sorry, <laughs> I was trying to get off mute there. Um, I agree. I mean, I'm not, um, I'm usually a fiscally conservative. You can look at my track record when I was on the Jackson County legislature. I think that my record speaks for itself, but I think that when it comes to use tax and us trying to address the concerns and needs of the citizens, especially when it comes to infrastructure, then we have to weigh all options and, and try to determine what is the best way forward. Um, also with the marijuana tax, I think that, um, you know, if there is a way to add revenue to the city budget, then um, we need to, in order for us to provide better services, and that does not place an undue, does not place an undue burden on our residents and then we should be supportive and, and look at those types of, of measures as well. Thank you. DeMonte Rochester. Yeah, thank you for the question. I do believe that Raytown does a good deal of what of, of the resources they have, the money that they have. But I do agree that we do need to weigh our options on all available resources, uh, and I also and and also be be one who can work with other municipalities and see what's done in other areas that can help Raytown grow as well. Thank you, Greg Walters. Yes, um, I think that we should look at what the recent history of what's happened with the taxes in the Raytown area. The voters approved one of the bond issues before them of $7.5 million for storm sewer improvements. So that has in fact already been addressed, at least in that area. Uh, the use tax, which is quite a surprise, I'm the one that found this out, but I got a hold of the state records and we had predicted, or the city had predicted, I should say, a city staff, $200,000 of an increase in income from the use tax. Actually, it came in at about $1.1 million. So we got a pretty good bump from that one. And it worked in the right way. It could have been lower, but it, uh, it was not. So I, I look forward to, if the indication of all the packages I see delivered to people's homes, is any indication uh, that that number will continue and it will grow because more and more people are shopping online than going out to shop. Um, another area that is the 3% uh, sales tax on marijuana, which has already been discussed by some here. I believe we should vote, vote it through. I think that it should be remembered that the people that you that purchased marijuana are the ones that are paying it, not everybody else. And I see my stop sign. Okay, thank you. I try my yeah. best. <laughs> All right. Jim is Azer. Taxes are the number one, you know, problem uh, in any city, obviously. In Raytown, it's our number one problem because our need is great. And you ask yourself why is because we are not a city with big businesses. We used to have like five major car dealerships. I mean, they were they were a, they paid a lot of property taxes. They did a lot of overhead just in terms of of what they did mechanically and body work. We've lost all those. 
So we've watched major revenue from big businesses go down, and we've seen a lot of small businesses start up. So you ask yourself, you know, what's best for the people? Because when you talk about rate town and taxes, you're talking about the people's pocketbooks. And our needs are great because we haven't had the budget that we needed all along to keep our streets to where they need to be, to keep up with inflation, uh, and to address the problems in the neighborhoods. I think the answer is, you know, all, first of all, you say, well, it'd be nice if we had no taxes, but the rea what's realistic is we need them all. And we don't need a lot from all of them, but we need to carefully analyze our citizens. We are in a time of inflation where these people are hurting. I think the bonds certainly are, were the smartest way to go because it addresses the critical problems with the greatest. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the next question, we'll start with Teresa Garza. Like Kansas City, Raytown has a crime problem. What has the city tried that's been effective? And what are your thoughts about what, if anything, the city should do differently? Teresa. Yes, I know public safety, public safety is a big concern of individuals throughout the community as they've been walking and talking. And I think that um, we have a, you know, we have a pretty good police department. We, um, I know, I think are understaffed like so many other police departments across the country. So it's not just Raytown and it's looking at how we address that. I know that they recently passed a compensation package to help with that recruitment of officers and trying to get more people into the city and keeping them. So that's, a, that's one step. It's also looking at what other resources and partnerships we can form across the, the, the area, whether it's with Jackson County or surrounding areas. And what does that look like? I do know that like our 911 goes through the Jackson County. Um, and so I think there are things that they're already doing, but how do we look at that and what resources are out there to help address the crime, um, in, in particular, some of the more violent crimes. But I think that in Raytown, it tends to do a lot with more property crimes. Um, so I think that there are things and resources that we can, we can do. Um, people do want safe neighborhoods. And so we need to prioritize that law enforcement and our community efforts to reduce crime. And that also is part of the budget process. And, and you know, a budget is basically the city's priorities and what does that look like? Thank you. Jim Azer. This is a critical problem. And, and one of the biggest problems why we have uh, the crime rate where it is today. And, and um, 25 years ago, Raytown actually, of all the cities in the metropolitan area, was actually the second safest next to Lenexa. So that's changed. And why? Well, it's because primarily during that period since then, We've had absentee landlords come up and buy houses and buy houses, turn them into rental property. Oftentimes, they will not even go in and fix them up. They, uh, they will rent to people on a walk-in basis. They don't do any background checks. Consequently, these slum landlords have created transients. They come, oftentimes they get evicted. They hurt our school district very drastically. We've also seen the number of placement drastically be reduced. Uh, I think this is a, 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 is a telltale sign. We need to work on that. The last three years, I have uh, begged the budget increase for the police department. I've failed all three times. My, my, my response to that is if we can't add police to the budget, then what we probably do is we ought to go to the county we should ask for county to give us assistance with our policing, even if it's just with our traffic department, which we no longer have. Uh, I think it would help create better public safety and that's what we need. Thank you. DeMonte, are you there? Rochester, I don't, there he is. <laughs> Can't take a break here. Okay, DeMonte, did you hear the question about crime? Yes, I did. Um... I, believe, I agree with everybody else uh, pretty much on the panel that public safety is a huge concern uh, in our community. I've been hearing this a lot on the campaign trail, and I believe that um, once we generate, some, once we can uh, focus on collaborating to make get better fun, funding for our police department, which we have a great police department. I love our police department. I love our chief. Um, but I believe we need to do some collabor collaborative efforts to get more funding so we can concentrate on funding our police department more so that we can concentrate on um, traffic violations uh, and crime alone so that will help build, build our city. Um, otherwise, I think that we have a great police department 
We just need to focus on um, the resources that we have in hand and try to increase those funding so we can make a better police department. Thank you. Jason Snedden, please. Thank you. So first of all, we have an absolutely stellar chief of police that loves Raytown and he has a great vision for the safety of Raytown moving forward. The largest problem we're dealing with currently is ultimately funding. Uh, one potential partnership the community can form with the city is a neighborhood watch program. We had that where we lived before and it made a massive difference on the amount of crime that happened because there was awareness uh, in the neighborhood itself. Um, what we're doing right now is we're trying to compete with our other law enforcement agencies that can pay their employees more than we do currently. That hurts things a lot. If we allow just anyone to come into our department, there's a likelihood they're going to be recruited by another agency. And what happens then is we've invested lost time and finances on them just to be taken somewhere else. So Raytown is aiming for quality and longevity over just filling an opening instead of wasting precious time and money. And because of that, we're lacking in departments that could potentially bring in city revenues as well. One area would be uh, our missing traffic division. We don't currently have enough um, officers to focus on traffic alone. And I think about the school speed zone limits, which are made to keep the kids safe. And most people do not honestly respect that 25 mile per hour, 20 uh, all day zone. Um, crime's a concern. And if I was a betting person, I'd be willing to say that a lot of the crime is coming from uh, surrounding cities. Um, and I know the chief has great connections and there's collaboration efforts that are happening uh, between Jackson County Sheriff, other city police departments to do something together in that problem. Thank you. Greg Walters. Yes, uh, the police department is, first of all, we have to all accept the fact that it's not just a Raytown situation. It is also a, um, an area-wide situation. All of the cities are having trouble maintaining their officers. It's because of the climate in the country for the last number of years has been pretty much anti-police and not as many people want to go into that business because of it. I don't think it's really a, a problem of funding uh, it, it, as far as the city goes because we are funded for a, a larger department than we have. It's finding officers to go to work here. I do have some good news on that front. I had some conversations with the chief of police and he told me that he's got three new hires who will be coming in in the uh, spring, the spring coming up. So probably within the next month or two. And he also told me they are well aware, I've had conversations with him and the city administrator, they are well aware of the problem with the speeding that's going on in our community uh, and the need for better traffic enforcement. Uh, his intention, they're, they're working on that, I've been told by both of them, and their intention is to somehow mold the department so that you have people who are on, the, on, on patrol, but at the same time also going to areas where they can be to watch out for traffic and speeding in particular because it is a big problem in Raytown. It's a very dangerous problem. Um, I don't, well, I'm running out of time. I'm sorry. Uh, I would like to add if we go back to the 30 to 40 percent property tax, I'd like to speak more to it. The 34, 30 to 40 percent property tax. Uh, we'll, go, we'll, we'll see about that. All right. uh, next one is Mary Jane Van Beskirk. Well, um, I want to address something that Mr. Uh, Asia said, and that is we now have a rental regulation. And I think that has cut down a lot on the type of people that are moving here because um, it's, it's really tightened things up. Also, recruiting policemen is not just a Raytown problem, it's nationwide. And I, uh, I wanna say that it's just not the police department's problem to recruit it's ours as citizens to help recruit. When you hear somebody that say, hey, I'd like to work for the police department, man, get their name and call the chief. He'll call them right away. And I do believe that public safety is a real issue and we should take it seriously. We should support our police department. I know that uh, speeding on 50 highway is a big concern. But I also know that handing out traffic tickets is not a source of income for the city. So um, I think the best thing that we can do is support our police department. I know that we do have backup with the, uh, with the county and that's good, but I think we need to support our police department, support our police officers, and hopefully with this um, raise that they got, we'll be able to recruit more. Thank you. Thank you. Now for the next question, and it'll start with Jim Azer. It is, how do you receive news? 
and updates about what's happening in Raytown and what city or civic organizations are you part of? Um, first of all, we no longer have a newspaper. Um, I'll be really honest, I don't do Facebook. Uh, I'm on my computer, how do I receive news? Um, I do try to keep up and I am able to keep up uh, at City Hall. I think most important though, uh, I pay a careful attention to my neighbors. Uh, we have a lot of walkers uh, in Ward 2. Uh, we also have the trail coming through Ward 2. I think the, the number one thing that I rely on is networking with the people, uh, getting to know them. And I do know a lot of people just through my uh, the time I've spent actually coaching thousands of kids and hundreds teaching kids in the schools. So uh, I built up a, a network of, of knowing the people. I see them in the grocery stores. I see them everywhere I go at the wellness center. That's probably my number one source. Um, so between City Hall and 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 trying to have a, a an an active involvement in community, you know, where do I belong to? I you know I belong to the uh, uh, the coaches association. I've been a member of the NEA. Um, I, I've you know I don't I don't actually belong to like a lot of organizations just to belong to them. I used to was president of Toastmasters. Uh, I've over the years I've done a lot of those things, but um, I pay a lot of attention to just my community. Thank you. Mary Jane Van Buskirk. I miss the newspaper tremendously. I wish we had one. I wish somebody would see the need and, and come in and start one. I don't do the electronic newspapers. I don't do the electronic blogs. If there's something going on that we need to know about, City Hall is very, very good about sending us emails and text and letting us know. Um, I pay attention to my neighborhood. I talk to my neighbors. Um, I watch the news on television. Sometimes that's not the best way to get it, but that's about the only way you got to get it. Um, I do wanna say something. Um, when I said the rental regulations, the rental regulations are gonna cut down on absentee landlords and they're gonna make them responsible for their property. And I wanna make that clear. And um, that's all I have, thank you. Thank you. DeMonte, Rochester. DeMonte, <laughs> here he comes. You heard the question? I'm doing two things at once, sorry. Um, can you repeat okay. that question for me? Yeah, do you, how do you receive your news and updates about what's happening in Raytown? And what city or civic organizations are you part of? Okay, so um, I am a part of the Raytown Mansfield Association. I also sit on the Board of Zoning and Adjustments Committee. Um, I just recently, to, as of today, did an application to become a member of the Raytown Rotary Club. So I'm, I feel like I'm very vested and very connected to the Raytown community in so many different ways. Um, I also, also very much attend all of the Raytown Alderman meetings to be very connected and connect and uh, get the useful information as well as social media as well. Okay, thank you. Jason Snedden, please. Thank you. So um, there are not a lo lot of local news outlets. Um, I think a lot of people try to be comprised of current uh, affairs through Facebook, and it's just not a, a valid source, in my opinion, for many things. I think the best value that we can get to find out local issues is when we talk to our, our parents, our students, our residents, the teachers, and those people that are involved in the community to understand greater what's actually going on. Um, there's the Lee Summit Tribune. They do have a Raytown section I've got it right there. Um, so there are some sources, but we need to make sure and check the sources that we're using. Um, I'm involved in a lot of different places. Um, I'm the HOA president of the uh, uh, neighborhood I live in. I'm involved with uh, Caring for Kids, KC. We've been pouring into the local elementary schools here in Raytown through them. Um, I'm a member of the Raytown Rotary. I'm involved in the chamber. Um, you'll see me involved through attendance at uh, many of the um, uh, alderman meetings, the school board meetings, and you'll see me pretty much a little bit everywhere. So my involvement is fairly wide in the city. Thank you. Greg Walters. Good evening. 
Yes, um, in answer to your question, um, in 1999, I and another former alderman who has since passed away, Garth Bear, started up a uh, publication we called the Raytown Report. At the time, we called it Raytown News, but we changed it to the Raytown Report. And it's been continuously published as a blog in Raytown since that, de since that time. Um, we have a steady stream of readers, or we still have, we still publish usually on a weekly basis. We have a steady stream of readers and I use most of my information that I report back to the people are information that comes from City Hall. Um, and I use them as a source because it, it is a good and reliable source to use. Um, a, a good example is we have a massive sanitary sewer project going on in Ward 1. It is one mile wide, it is a quarter of a mile deep, and it is replacing the sanitary sewer lines to a tremendous amount of homes. Uh, I published that, published the maps, put down where it's gonna be, gave them the technical details of how it's going to be done. And then I went ahead and distributed it to people because one thing I've heard going door to door was from people was they wish they had a newspaper, a local newspaper that gives them the information that they want. And our readership, and I can show you the numbers, is amazing how many hits we get a week on this. And the, pub, and the comments we get back from people. So that's one way we can look at it. Uh, I agree with Mr. Snedden's comments, relying upon social media is not a good way to look for news. So that's about all I have to say about that. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Thank you. Teresa Garza. Yes, thank you. Um, as far as how I get my news, I mean, obviously they kind of mentioned Raytown Digest, the Raytown Report, um, you know, the Lee Seventh Tribune. There's also the daily record publication um, that the city tends to use for public hearings and so forth, um, which often people aren't aware of is what I've learned. Um, there's also the city newsletter, which I actually have right here um, that comes out and I get that as well as the city's website. And then also talking to residents, you know, you get a, you learn a lot about their concerns and their issues and, and just lack of information that's often out there. And like Greg said, I have heard quite a bit about the, you know, the missing of a Raytown newspaper. Um, also the Raytown School District, um, their website and the city's website, you can always go in and watch um, any of the Board of Aldermen meetings, as well as download the agendas, as well as for all of the committees like planning and zoning and so forth. So that's where I tend to get most of mine as far as what I'm involved in here in just Raytown is um, the Raytown Chamber and I'm also part of their legislative committee. And then also um, I do sit on the board of directors for the Hispanic Chamber, which serves the Raytown area with a lot of our Hispanic businesses that are here in the area. Um, those are the two main ones for, for the Raytown area. I do serve on quite a few boards um, that also have the potential to help Raytown, such as the Jacob and Ella C. Luce Foundation. And then also I sit on um, the um, Social Venture Studio, which deals specifically with entrepreneurs that are looking for um, sources, resources, and funding throughout the KC metro area. Um, those are Thank really you. the main ones. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, for our next question, and we will start that with DeMonte Rochester. He's here. Yes. And here is the question. Please assess the current business climate in Raytown as you see it, as well as your thoughts about what could be improved, and perhaps also what uh, Raytown um, uh, alderman could do about that. The Raytown business, business um, a community is a great community, uh, especially associated with the Raytown Chamber. Uh, I will add, I will add on that I would like to see a small business social, I mean, so small business community, I mean, uh, established through the city to help our small businesses grow, and so that they can kind of like want to get to know one another and collaborate and make some and make some uh, recommendations with, with with one another. Uh, other than that, I believe we have a good small community. We have good mall and Paul shops around here, and we all support each other, and that's what community is all about. Thank you. Teresa Garza. Yes, can you please repeat the question, Tommy? Be glad to, be glad to. Please assess the current business climate in Raytown as you see it. Also your thoughts about what could be improved and what the aldermen's, aldermen could do about that. Yes, so I think um, the Raytown Main Street has done a good job with our downtown area and bringing it back. There's, um, you know, some other things that they can do, but it's definitely come a long way. I remember growing up here and how vital it was and all of the businesses that existed along the Main Street corridor. So it's nice to see that coming back around. I think our chamber does a good job also, as does our economic development and community development staff at the city and recruiting, attracting and retaining our businesses and what that looks like. I know that surrounding cities are also looking at entrepreneurs 
entrepreneurship. So I think Rate Town could step into that a little bit more and how we help other people that are wanting to come into Rate Town and start a business and providing them with the resources they need and what does that look like. I know that surrounding communities have, you know, um, shared workspaces and other things that they do for those small startup businesses. And I think that's the potential that Rate Town can really step into moving forward and it will attract younger people also back to our community. Thank you. Greg Walters. Yes, the uh, business climate in not just the, in the Kansas City area or Raytown area, you know, across the nation is changing. We, we are seeing what is the diminishing role of the large box stores is being replaced by uh, direct delivery from uh, places like Amazon and so forth like that. So that's one area you've got to look at as far as the local area goes, because we did have a large number of large stores here. Walmart's a good example. The first one comes to mind. But uh, beyond that, this transition uh, can bode well for small businesses that uh, are entrepreneurial in, in design and can start going forward with that and specializing in certain areas. I come from that sector because I, own a, I owned a small business. My father owned it before me. It's a family owned business. I owned it from after he did. Uh, two years ago, I sold it to my daughter. She's the third generation and the first woman to own the company too. And it's been a successful uh, business for us. And I think that we can see that type of model used in Raytown, where if we try to go after the smaller businesses, say like a bicycle shop that may want to locate near the Rock Island Trail uh, would be a good one. I, I know of one, I'll hope for one of my neighbors who has a business there was willing to, was ready to sell his to a, a such a company. Unfortunately, the deal fell through for a number of reasons. But I think that there's opportunity for Raytown being a suburban area uh, where people want to call home and be able to relax easily and go out and enjoy life. They want the small flavors of going out to different businesses as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jane, Mary Jane Van Buskirk, please. Thank you. Well, we just had a new business open in Raytown and it's doing great and it's Harps Barbecue. And if you guys haven't tried it, you're missing it. It's a jewel. We've had uh, uh, difficulty bringing in restaurants, sit down restaurants, family restaurants, something other than drive through or a burger joint. Um, I think each of us at Alder, as aldermen know of some restaurant that we would like to see come to Raytown. And perhaps we could contact these people and contact the chamber, Vicki and uh, she could meet with them and maybe they could come up with a location that would be suitable for them to start their business. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Azer. Well, the word climate is kind of relative and I can't tell you that I'm, I'm truly can give you an accurate account of what the climate is, but I can assess this. The number one thing I've heard for years from my constituents is why don't we have a nice sit down restaurant. I've heard that over and over again, and Mary Jane Van Buskirk mentioned that. Um, I think truly we have a lot of small businesses. I think it's actually amazing with how many people have come to Raytown because of the cheaper property and, and really tried to open up some really quality small businesses. Um, as far as large businesses, truly uh, we are the dollar general capital of the world. Uh, we have more of those per capita than anybody. Uh, we have per capita, I'd like to know how many, uh, how well we fare on liquor, cigarettes, and marijuana. Uh, but I think the real climate, climate is, can be seen by the number of large vacant lots on 350 Highway that nobody wants to buy or move into. And that's the climate itself. We have three on 350 Highway that would be, could, they're huge. What's a whole square block? We have some even downtown. We can't sell the downtown space. It's an ideal place to build a great business. We love to sell it with the city. We don't have any buyers. So I see that as the climate. We cannot attract the big companies that we really need in Ray 10. Thank you. Jason Snedden. Thank you. So um, I believe in, in some very unique ways that our, our current business climate is unique in the fact that we do have uh, a lot of innovative and uh, unique places. We've got the Crave that's gonna be opening up soon. And that's very different from what you're gonna find going into Lee Summit or Blue Springs or anything like that. 
So we do have that, that upper hand. We've got to figure out how to get people here to um, be consumers in that area. I believe, I think I resonate with everybody else that family restaurants are key. Um, but what I think a lot of people don't realize is that we do have quality family sit down restaurants. We've got um, uh, Loot Feast Fried Fish. We've got Bella Bees. We've got the Crave opening up. There's some really good things happening in Raytown. We have to get people here to be part of that. I think part of the issue that we're noticing is um, we've got all these strip malls that are dilapidated. We've got these owners that are out of state who really don't care to maintain them. And there needs to be something, uh, some way to enforce the ordinances that are currently in place and add new ordinances to enforce rules upon those businesses that are falling apart. They're a danger actually to the society. Thank you. Let's look at the next question and we will start that with Mary Jane Buskirk. And this is it. What rating would you give your ward, the ward, ward you represent on the board or where you live regarding the services of garbage collection, trash, streets, sidewalks, emergency services, and safety? And why? what rate would I give our ward? Yes. I think our ward is doing very well. I work very hard at, um, turning in code violations, um, potholes, sidewalks that are pushing up. Um, as far as fire and ambulance, I, I think they do a great job. They're going up and down our street all the time. I think we could say that our ward is probably a three plus, if not a four. Thank you. Okay. Teresa Garza, would you like me to repeat that or have you got it? Nope, got it, Tommy. Thank you very much. Um, I think that our ward, for the most part, does a really good job. We have, um, I have heard as I'm campaigning and talking to people, and even prior to my actually jumping into the race, is that there are some concerns um, as far as safety within the community, especially over around Kanegi Park, and what does that look like, and how do we address it? There are some concerns about trash. Um, there's so many different, um, you know, entities that you can utilize, so it's not always consistent. Um, and like a lot of cities that have like a single RFP process for or one trash service. So I think there's some things that we can explore and look at that would make people a lot happier um, with the services that they're, that they're are receiving and attempting to get. Um, okay. Also, I, I would just say like real fast also, um, you know, um, the rental regulation was, was uh, mentioned earlier. And so, you know, I, I've heard from people that they don't think it goes far enough. And I think that's something that we need to look at and why they don't think that. Thank you. Greg Walters. Yes, as far as the trash service in Raytown goes, it's all done by private entities. Um, the only way that would change is if the city council were to step up and say, hey, we, we need to consolidate this and put some order to it. Uh, in all the years I've been up there, there've been a couple changes or a couple efforts to make that change that has not been successful. Um, I, I'm not saying that it wouldn't be successful in the, in the future. I would be open to looking at it. I will say that much. Um, regarding the rating of my ward, I, I think I, I pester the heck out of them at City Hall when I see something wrong. And I think sometimes they just uh, go out and fix it to shut me up, to be honest with you. But the thing is, I think that we all, all of us on the City Council take a, a real interest in our wards. I know as I campaign, I've turned in I think, three areas that need street lights. Uh, numerous complaints about streets. That's the number one priority for almost everybody that's going to be voting this election. They want to know how soon you're going to make my street look like it's supposed to, rather than a bunch of potholes and cracks in it. And I think that that's a, something with this new income that we have coming in from hopefully the marijuana tax, the $1 million windfall we got from the uh, other tax that we talked about earlier, the use tax and also help from the state and money that we're gonna be getting from the bond issue that the people voted. We should be able to move forward on these pretty soon. And in fact, I can tell you from my conversations with the city administrator, we are moving forward on them and we will all be hearing of it soon. Thank you. Jim Azer. Um, you know, after Flynn sold, it resold again. And that company has raised their prices. Uh, there was at least two days they didn't show up to pick up trash. Because of that, many people have left that company. And they have called the company to ask them to come pick up those containers. It's been a really big problem. 
in my ward. It was actually, uh, you know, on on some of the uh, the internet uh, where people were talking about them uh, that they've had to take their trash containers. Some of them even thrown them in ditches outside the city. So it's a big, it's a big deal. That uh, uh, I did have a constituent call me. Uh, I forwarded it directly to our city administrator explained to him he called that company and he has solved at least one problem within i want to say minutes by that i mean you know an hour and a half 90 minutes it was taken care of um in my ward you know it's really a, a, a wonderful ward but we do have pockets we have some houses even in really good neighborhoods where the trash is piled up on the front doorstep I it was like a pulp with the liquors uh, and all that stuff. So uh, we have at least six vacant houses in my ward, one with the roof falling in. We had another one with the roof falling in. So there are problems in neighborhoods, even in the best, best neighborhoods. So we have a lot to work on. Thank you. Jason Snedden. Um, so I, I think we're hitting kind of a common theme with uh, citywide. Um, but this is something that's still very topical. We've got a garbage collection issue for sure. We have, I don't even know how many companies we have that are available to us. And a lot of what Jim is saying is right. Um, the end of my street is cluttered with trash because everybody uses different modes of how to dispose of the trash. And so they flip it upside down, trash goes rolling down the street, and we've got this big collection problem. Um, because of the prices and the changes that have been going on, people are not actually taking their trash out. We found trash in the lake behind our house. Um, the trash cans absolutely are not collected. When somebody cancels service, they get thrown in the lake as well. Um, there's uh, some ordinance issues when it comes to the way people park and the way people are or aren't keeping their yards up, um, grass in the street and things like that that aren't being enforced. Um, Streets are unkept throughout. I know Ward 1 has an even worse issue with the condition of the streets. Um, safety is one topic that I will say has been pretty great. We've had to call the police several times and within minutes we get a responder and they're there taking care of problems. So I haven't experienced the problems that a lot of people are complaining about. All in all, there's, there's more issues, but um, we have an amazing ward um, with some amazing people in it. There's just work that needs to be done. Thank you. Demonte Rochester. Yes, thank you. I believe that um, in Ward One, we we definitely need we definitely have work to do. I've been mean, out on the campaign trail talking to residents and trash and public safety order highest concerns in the ward. Um, I believe that we need to take a look at our ordinances because our ordinances are outdated. We need to change our ordinances, and we also need to focus on. Um, better city services and how those things are articulated at the city level and try and get those uh, translated back to the community and let the community know that we're working on the best interests as far as basic city services are, are I mean, are how to, how to handle on the city level so that we can get back to the community, let the community know that we are working on better city services and public safety and looking at a solution um, as, as Greg said, evaluating the trash services in our area. Thank you. Okay, this is the last question. We'd like you to think about one question you wish I had asked and please answer it. So we will start with Mary Jane Van Beskirk. <coughs> Excuse me. One question you would have asked. No, one question you wish I had you, asked. You, I wish you had asked. Yes, and please answer it. I wish you would have asked about transparency at City Hall. I would say that transparency at City Hall is extremely good. I have never called our city administrator with a question that he hasn't called me back the same day with an answer or directed me where to go. I think integrity is, is a, a big part, integrity and honesty is a big part of transparency. And I believe that our, we have the best staff, they work hard, they are honest and they're transparent. And if you ask a question, they're gonna give you an answer whether you like it or not. Thank you. Thank you. 
Greg Walters. I wish you had asked a, a question having to do with the county why property tax increases people are going to see showing up in their mailboxes in November. Uh, they've had some uh, some uh, meetings, public meetings about it, one of which, if you want to view it, it was really interesting, very informative. It was two hours long. I've got it posted on my website, the Raytown Report, right at the top of the page. You can link to it and go to it. This 30 to 40 percent property tax increase is going to have a huge impact on everybody in the in the metropolitan Kansas, in the Jackson County area, metropolitan area, for that matter, the state of Missouri particularly around here, because uh, I don't believe that we're especially underassessed here. I believe that what they're coming with, when you talk of raising property values to 30 to 40%, that means that your property tax has the possibility of going up that high. We need to make the people aware of that. And it's just a little time before the election, because there are some things on the ballot that will be affected by it. One is a school tax levy increase. That levy increase is another increase on top of the 30 to 40 percent it's going to be huge and it has the possibility of running people out of their homes i don't want to see that happen in raytown i i believe that uh, people need to become informed on it and i thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about it uh, one other thing the information i received came from deron mcgee he is the uh, director of the jackson county legislature he's the chairman so i can use him as the the source for all the information i just gave you thank you thank you Jason Snedden. Jason? Sorry, so the one thing that I wish uh, was touched on is something that I believe was in the, um, the forum that you guys had two years ago and that's talking about the image or perception of Raytown from the outside area. So I'm known for connecting with people wherever I go and there's a common theme with Raytown's perceived image of the outside from the outside areas. Uh, our infrastructure is failing. The roads are in poor condition. We're a thoroughfare to over 60,000 plus cars every day on 350 and people run right through. They simply don't know how great Raytown is, only what they've heard. So why would they stop? We need to change that image, honestly, from the inside out. We need more quality small business and mom and pop businesses. We need more positive opportunities in Raytown and less negativity within our own city. Community needs to be developed and reinforced. We need more people to be on board with positive change. Raytown is extremely uniquely positioned. There's people who drive through here every day, but many don't ever stop. And there's some leverage that we're missing out on. So in 2026, Kansas City is going to be hosting the FIFA World Cup, and it's happening right down the road from us. This will be the biggest draw likely that Kansas City's ever experienced. We have an opportunity to shine and draw people here. This could be a major benefit to our local businesses and revenue for the city. But how many people are going to pass right through if it still looks the same? Probably most of them. And that would be a shame. So I'll close with this. Everything has a life cycle, no matter what it is, and that includes the city as well. Unless we do something to change that image, it's gonna remain the same. Thank you. DeMonte Rochester. Yes, thank you. One question I wish you would ask is, how do you get along with other members of the board? And I believe one way to be, get along with the members of the board is to build unity. You have to be a, a collaborator to build unity in order to get along with other members of the board and have a collaborative working working relationship um, and be able to get things done. Thank you. Thank you. Greg Walters. I'm oh, I'm already sorry. Answered. You've That's already okay. answered. And no, I'm not going to have you answered it yet. Um, I'm going to have, let's see here. Uh, Jim Azer, please. I think over the past four years, the one issue I have felt most passionately about is who does an alderman give us loyalty first? And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Uh, in, at City Hall, almost none of our workers, staff members, live in Raytown. Very, almost none of our police live in Raytown. Very, very few of the businessmen live in Raytown. There's very few teachers that live in Raytown. The people that live in Raytown are the people in the neighborhoods. This is the neighborhood community. And so as an alderman, uh, I know we have to listen to everybody. We have to listen to our businessmen. We have to uh, respect our staff that really works hard to build a good city hall. They've done that. But the people that vote for us, they're the ones that have invested their savings to buy a house, 
to live here, to raise their kids here. They're the ones that pay the property taxes. And when they go to the store, they pay the sales taxes. They, they pay the use taxes. Uh, I believe as aldermen, when the issues comes up, the people that should stand at the top of our list that we wouldn't listen close to, if anybody gets a favor, it should be the people that live in the neighborhoods, our constituents, our voters, the ones that really own Raytown. Thank you. And Mary Jane Van Busker, please. Mary Jane? I already answered. Okay, then we've got a, I have got a confusion here. And I please it is Teresa Garza, probably. Yes. Not, please do it. <laughs> please do it. Yes, no problem. Thank you, Tommy. Um, I think one of the questions um, I wish you would have asked is more about economic development and what that looks like for the city. I know that we have a comprehensive plan, but we don't really have an economic development plan. We have general ideas, but nothing specific. And I think that if we want to really grow Rate Town and have it more, um, you know, livable for people, then we have to look at that economic development component and what does that do and how do we get those businesses in. Um, and part of that is also making sure that we utilize the resources that are already available at the state level as well as the federal level to get those businesses to come into our community so that we do have people that are staying here and living here and working here. Thank you. Okay, candidates, it's time for your two minute closing remarks. Take a moment to gather your thoughts. I wanna personally thank you all for joining us, learning about your next, school, next board representatives. Now, we will start with the closing remarks with DeMonte Rochester for two minutes. Yes, I want to thank the League of Women Voters tonight, along with the Ray Town Chamber for hosting this interview, I mean, hosting this forum for us tonight. Um, I want to say that it is time for some changes in War One. Uh, it's time for some, for some fresh faces and some uh, fresh ideals. Uh, it's time for a new leadership. It's time for a new wealth of knowledge that I have that I can bring to the table. It's time for uh, me to be able to work with the other armor to get things moving and get things done in Ray Town. Um, I believe that I'm the best candidate for that. And I look for your support on April 4th. Thank you for your time tonight. And again, thank you for the League of Women Voters and the Raytown Chamber. Thank you. Jason Snedden, please. Sorry about that. Um, to put it simply, I live here, I work here, and I play here at the same time. I see the potential in Raytown every single day. The one thing I will say is uh, doing something like this can be a thankless position, uh, but for somebody who's geared towards making change, it's a great position. It takes more than one person on a board for change to happen. It takes concerned voters. It takes a representative who cares about their citizens. It takes a candidate who can champion ideas, who can fight for what's right, and one who plays well with others. It's a great city. It, it could easily be a world-class city if everyone would come together. My business experience, my education, my entrepreneurial heart, as well as my ability to bring people together can be the beginning of that change. Community is key and community comes through the hard work of a quality city council, quality city staff, and most of all, a citizen base that wants the same. I think that's something that we all share and I can help us get there. One way I try to develop this is the way I ran funding my campaign to develop trust within the people. I didn't go out seeking funding. My campaign has been self-funded and it isn't cheap. Um, I found that in the many years in business that I have, a foundation is built through pouring into the community instead of taking from it. Finally, I'm a doer. I follow through. I'm very active. I don't miss mince words. And my word is my word. I absolutely keep it. There's not enough time, unfortunately, to talk here and uh, let everybody know who we are exactly. But there's more information you can get from me on my Facebook page. It's elect Jason Snedden or my website at jason4raytown.com. Make sure you vote on the fourth, educate yourself on the candidates and make the best decision for your ward. Vote for Jason Snedden because this is absolutely your city. Thank you. Jim Azer. Well, two minutes is I've got enough time to address all the critical problems that we need to address. I'll share three passions that are very important to me. Uh, and my constituents. The first one is property tax relief for seniors. Uh, seniors are our most overlooked 
people. We've been an aging community for a long time, and we have a lot of seniors in our community that are alone. Uh, I've seen seniors that buy their prescription pills one at a time or a few at a time because they can't afford it. We need more activities for seniors. They need property tax relief. I know the state is considering that also. I think public safety has always been at the, at, at the most important thing that we have to concern with. Uh, we have seen the number, not just crime go up, but the number of murders go up. We are concerned about our children on the streets. Uh, because of the traffic also, it's becoming unsafe. Uh, we want our neighborhoods to be safe. Public safety is always critical, and we need to address that. Our streets, the streets aren't all the same in every neighborhood or every block, but we have some blocks that I have seriously thought of filming and uh, taking pictures of and putting on in Facebook and say, hey, if any city saw this, Raytown would be totally embarrassed. We have in Southbrook, for example, three blocks straight that are crumbling so bad Neighborhoods don't have sidewalks. We have a lady who's wheelchair bound. She can't go on a sidewalk. She has to ride a wheelchair in streets. She walks her dog. She's had her wheelchair dumped over because the street's so bad, the wheelchair won't even, she had to call the fire department to come to put her back in the chair. That is how serious our streets are. We need to, we need to address them not just on our major overflow streets, but the neighborhoods too. Thank you. Teresa Garza. Yes, thank you. Um, my biggest takeaway from my military service in the United States Navy is that every decision and action we make has a ripple effect, whether we see it or not. My commitment to serving others and improving the community has been illustrated over the years, both in my personal and professional life. I have, I have had great success about leveraging partnerships, building teams, and also strategic planning throughout my professional career. Plus my wealth of knowledge in policy and governmental affairs, economic development, budgetary and financial oversight as a Jackson County legislator will help to ensure that the city of Raytown is accountable and efficient on behalf of our residents. At the local level, it is not about political agendas and ideologies, but more about creating a collaborative atmosphere that solves community problems. It is important that our elected officials are available and accessible, and that is exactly what I will be by serving on the Board of Aldermen. Together, we can have a healthier and happier community by addressing the issues most important to us. We all want safe, healthy communities, excellent schools, attainable home ownership, and a strong quality of life. Plus, we want the opportunities to work, save, and provide for our families. These are the values that I grew up with, and these are the values that I am willing to fight for on your behalf as Ward 4, as your next Ward 4 Board of Alderwoman. Thank you. Mary Jane Van Busker, please. Thank you. Well, I just want to make the citizens aware of several things that I have done while I was in office. I um, had the problem resolved at a local car wash on 350 Highway where squatters tried to establish residency in one of the car wash bays. I had the city shut down an illegal toll lot operation in a residential neighborhood, 78 and 350 Highway. I supported the establishment of numerous businesses in Raytown, including Tidal Wave Auto Spa and Glass America on 350 Highway. I worked closely with Raytown Codes Department to clean up blighted homes and businesses in Ward 4. And there's much more work to be done. And I'm ready to do it. I got my gloves. I'm ready to dig in. I'm ready to do it. OK, thank Organization you. Go ahead. Organization organizations oh that I have served on okay. have been the Finance Committee. I'm appointed li liaison here, to the Tax Oversight Committee appointed to the Eth Ethics Committee. I'm a member of the Raytown Chamber of Commerce, member of the Raytown Historical Society, member of the Raytown Main Street Association, and member of Friends of the Rice Germani Home Association. I haven't gone out of, can out of Raytown to get endorsements. My endorsements are Dave Matthews, a homeowner in Ward 4, Donna Whitaker, a retired Raytown school teacher, Daryl Swafford, a former Raytown school board member, Barb Schlapia, current current member of the Raytown Fire, Depe Fire Protection District Board, former uh, Raytown Alderman in Ward 4, Steve Myers, former uh, Raytown Alderman in Ward 4 and a local business owner, and former Raytown Mayor Robert Grissom. 
I hope that I can get your vote on April the 4th to continue my work, to move Raytown forward and to make it a better place to raise your family and to live. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us this evening to share your views on these important topics. Anitra. Thank you, audience. I do want to clarify that Diane Kresik tried to join in this forum and then had connectivity pro problems, but she did try to attend. Thank you, candidates. And thank you, audience, for your thought-provoking questions and your interest in the April 4 primary election. A recording of this forum will be available on the League's website, lwvkc.org. Oh, just one moment. I just got a note. Somehow I missed Greg Walters for the <gasps> closing remarks, and I, I apologize for that. Someone pointed it out to me. Greg, would you please give that right now? I will. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Anitra, I apologize for interrupting your talk, but I'm willing to listen to it again. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what I wanted to say was um, I wanted to remind the voters of what's on the ballot coming up this April 4th. Uh, we have obviously five wards where there are aldermen, where there are candidates filed for aldermen. If you're in well, any of those wards, go to the votes, go to the polls, and please do vote. That's very important. Um, there's also on the ballot, a 3% marijuana sales tax, which we spoke of earlier, a number of the members of the committee or the candidates spoke of it. As there's also one for Jackson County for a 3% marijuana sales tax increase. The one I'm most interested in, of course, would be the one in Raytown. It could be a big boon to this city and help with some of the financial problems that we do face from time to time. Uh, there's also two school bond issues on that. I urge you to become familiar with them. Jack, uh, and also there are seven candidates running for the Raytown School Board. In closing, I would like to thank the League of Women Voters for what I think is an excellent forum. This is the best I've ever been to, and I've been to a lot of them. Um, I wanted to close with saying that the strength in Raytown, in our community, is the people in Raytown. And I want to, to make sure that the people in Ward 1 understand that I I'm always willing and ready to stand with you. I will take your calls. I will get your problems resolved with City Hall because I know from time to time as a complicated business of government that there are times when it does help to have somebody in your corner when facing City Hall. So please keep me in mind. I'd appreciate your vote on April 4th. Thank you very much. Well, thank you too, Greg. And Nietzsche, can you finish up? <laughs> no, no, I'm glad to finish up. Uh, audience, please take a moment to share our candidate forums via your Facebook page next door and other favorite social media channels. And remember, for complete voting and candidate information, visit lwvkc.org and vote411.org. And don't forget to tell your mother-in-law to watch this online. Uh, she can be very proud of you. <laughs> Thank you and good night. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.